In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, is in him that we move, live, and have our being. We are thankful to God for this day, for this moment, just to be in his presence, to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise for being the God that he is. Amen. Will you stand with me very quickly for a word of prayer on tonight as we prepare to move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for, again, this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Thank you now for your people that have assembled. Thank you for those that are watching us by live stream. Uh, thank you for those that are on uh, uh, BoxCast, other platforms, God, that are watching us tonight. And I pray, God, as your word go forth, God, that we'll be enlightened, we'll be strengthened, God, and we'll be empowered by your word that we again might move into those things that you have ordained for our life in this season as we declare the burden of truth, as we live that word that has gone forth to become all that you've destined us to be before the foundation of the world. I'm believing you for supernatural things, God, that you will touch God in ways that we have never been touched before, that we might receive that empowerment that we need in order to be able to move forward to become the people and the children that you've ordained for us to be. And so, God, I thank you, and I come with high expectation, believing, God, that all things have got to work together for our good. And, God, that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper, and every tongue that arises shall be condemned in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, we lift you, and we bless you, and we thank you for all that you're going to do on tonight, God. As we prepare ourselves to head up to Palm Sunday, God, where they laid palm leaves in the way as Jesus was making his triumphant entry, entry into Jerusalem, and God. So we thank you for remembering those things, God. And then seven days later, he was crucified for the sins of the world that we might all have a right to the tree of life. And so, God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place tonight. We thank you for the lives that's going to be touched we thank you for the signs and wonders that will come by through the preaching of your holy and divine word. Touch every life in this place, God. Touch all of those that are even praying for somebody else on tonight, God. That whatever they need, God, that they will be able to receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, God, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you. And we praise you for this day. Praise you for this moment. Praise you for this night. In the matchless name of Jesus to Christ, we pray, and we say amen, amen, amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What an awesome, wonderful, and mighty God we serve. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give honor and praise to the Most High God for this day, for this moment, again, for this opportunity just to bask in His holy and divine presence. We thank God for those of you that are here on tonight. Those, again, that are watching us by live stream, we welcome you, amen, to the broadcast. We welcome you into the sanctuary as we prepare to share the word of God on tonight, amen. I'm still believing that God's going to fill this place on a Tuesday night in Parliament, amen, amen. As his word continues to penetrate and go forth, we're already growing, amen. And so we just honor and bless the Lord that we believe that he's going to even do greater and even do better things. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the service on this past Sunday? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God has a way that's mighty sweet. Amen. And so we just honor and bless him for what he continues to do and how he continues to show himself strong and he continues to do the impossible in our lives. Amen. I pray that you would take that message and just share it. You know, somebody, somebody said, what was the title of the message? You. <laughs> Amen. That's the title of it. You. Amen. That's what he gave me. That's what I work with. Amen. And so we thank God. Amen. For his rich work. And we thank God for uh, all of our men that had an opportunity to attend the prayer breakfast on this uh, past Saturday. Again, we had a wonderful and glorious time in the name of the Lord. And again, I want to take the opportunity to publicly thank those women that came and served us so beautifully and bountifully. Come on, bless the Lord for them. They did an excellent job, amen, in serving us on this past Saturday. And we had a wonderful, wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Amen. I can still smell that grits and, and salmon and, and corned beef hash and, and rolls, amen, and French toast, eggs, sausage, bacon, 
Amen. Danishes, amen. Apple juice, orange juice, coffee. Amen. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. I could use a plate right now, amen, that we had a wonderful, wonderful time in the name of the Lord, amen. And so we are thankful for all the pastors and leaders that came to support us. We just bless the Lord for all of the leaders that came from across Sumter County, from Gilbert, South Carolina, from Winsboro, amen, from McBee, South Carolina, Manning, Waibu, all those gentlemen that came to be a part of that event, and we just honor and bless the Lord in a very, very powerful way. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Bishop Gibson on yesterday, and he was really enthused and thrilled about what had taken place and the impact that he believed that it had on the lives of the men that were a part of that setting on this past Saturday. Amen. And so we thank him and to our very own, the Simon Brothers. Amen. They came and gave us a great word to our young kids. Amen. And our adults on Saturday. And we honor and bless the Lord for them. Amen. As they continue to go forth and make their way in life. Amen. And so we are, we are just thankful to God for what he's doing and how he's moving. Amen. Don't forget this coming Sunday. Amen. It's Capital Giving, uh, giving Day. Amen. Please bring your checks, your money orders, your cashier check, uh, Apple Pay. Amen. Go fund me, whatever you got. Amen. We're going to take it on Sunday. Amen. As we come to give and come to share. Amen. In our giving. Amen. As we continue to move forward and do those things that we believe that God has ordained for us to do as a people. Amen. And so I'm thanking God for all of those that will give and share on this coming Sunday, on this coming Palm Sunday, as we come to give as giving unto the Lord to share and give back a portion to him, to the kingdom that he has given to us. Amen. And so we're looking forward for that. If you haven't turned in your pledge cards, it's not too late. Amen. So we can kind of gauge to kind of know where we are. Uh, but again, one of the things is that we're afraid of money, you know. And so when you're scared of money and you're afraid of money, you're kind of afraid to make commitments and all that kind of stuff. But God, again, we keep quoting the scripture that he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. So somewhere down the line, we got to learn how to believe what we preach and believe what we say. So all of those things can line up in the direction in which God would have for us to go. Amen. So we are thankful. For all that he has done this far, and we are thankful for what he has yet to do in our lives. Amen. All right. And so, again, today has been a great day, has been a wonderful day, and we just thank God for how he has blessed us. Again, I pray that we get to the point that we begin to understand that every day that God gives us is a brand new day. Amen. Amen. You can't become so familiar with time and become so familiar with seasons that you forget that you are living in a day that never existed before in the history of the world. Amen. Never existed. That's the first time in your life that you ever sat in that seat right there, right? On March the 19th, right, 2024. You ain't, ain't nobody never sat in that seat right there before in their life. See, see, we don't see. That just went over your head, see? Nobody. This is the first time in the history of the world. Amen. Watch this. This is the first time in the history of the world that you ever put on them shoes you got on right now. See, see, see you, just, you just think, see, you don't understand. You don't understand what God is doing for. Amen. It's a brand new day, a brand new moment. Every second that ticks by is a brand new second that never existed before in the world. This is the first time in the history of the world that March 19, 2024 has ever existed. This is the first time that the sun ever came up on this day. And it's the first time it's going to ever go down on this day. Amen? And so we have to get to the point when we begin to understand truth and understand what God is doing. Amen? So in other words, he gave me new mercies for this day. What I used yesterday, I don't even have to use today because he's given me new mercies for this day in which I'm now living in. And so I got to learn how to be thankful for every moment that God has given to me, folks. Amen. I got to be thankful for every moment, no matter how it looks, no matter how it seems. I got to learn how to be thankful for every moment that God has given me. And so every day I wake up, every second I breathe, every time I move, I got to understand that God is allowing me to do something that has never, ever done, ever been done before. Amen. And so I give him praise, I give him glory, and I give him honor for all that he is doing. Amen. And so John 14 and 6 said, Jesus answered and said, I am the way 
and the truth and the life that no one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. You can't get to him any other way. And then John 8, 31, 32, he says, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Now, don't you understand that people are still fighting for freedom? Just to be free. Right? Just to be free. They're still fighting to be free. They're still fighting for liberation. They're still fighting for liberty. They're still fighting for justice. And the only way that the true manifestation of this peace is going to come is that we have to understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. That's the only way that I can really live. Other than that, then the only thing that will happen to me is that I end up existing and going through the motions. Right? And what has happened with us is over time, we went from living to just existing and going through the motions. Even before you get up, you've already complained about the day. <laughs> you've already complained. Even before you get one foot on the ground, you already start complaining. All right? All right? You let them say something to me today. I already complained, haven't been said thank you, haven't said already thought the worst instead of thinking about the good that God has an opportunity to use you to bring forth in the lives of people. Amen. And so Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you, all right, to help you to be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. All right? So he wants to give you another comforter. He wants to give you another advocate. And what is that advocate's job? That advocate's job, that comforter's job is to lead you into all truth. All right? So that's why he said in Psalms, acknowledge him in all your ways. And he'll do what? Direct your path. Uh -huh. Now, what's the problem? We're not acknowledging him. All right? What we do is that we go and do a thing, and then after we do a thing, then we want to talk to God about help me, Lord. All right? God said, I told you to help me before you started. All right? We want to do the thing, and then when the thing don't come out right, then we want to rehouse the thoughts and save me, Jesus, save me. <laughs> I right. right. make a song out of anything. <laughs> right. 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 Jesus said, well, I'm, try I'm trying to get you to acknowledge me in everything that you do so that the mistakes and mishaps that you're making, that you won't continue to make them. Right? But we want to be bold enough because we think that we're so smart and we think that we got it going on that we want to go and try to do a thing first and then when we make a mess out of it, then we want to ask God to come and save us. Right? But I told you this before and I'll tell you it again. One of these days, God going to save us. So it's okay since you deal that hand, play it out. Play it out. You play it out. You play, you play that hand out. Right? You play that hand out because I told you to acknowledge me in all that you do. And I will direct your path. He said, that's why I'm going to send you another advocate, another comforter to help you and be with you forever. Not just on Sunday. Right? Not just on Tuesday night empowerment. But to be with you forever. Now, what's part of our problem? Is most of the time, the only time that we want to acknowledge God is on Sunday morning. All right? Oh, so for some of us, the only time we pray is Sunday. Right? And he says that I'm going to give you an advocate to help you and to be with you forever. And, so, and the spirit of truth that is going to be with you forever. To lead you and to guide you. Why is it that someone that he's giving to us to lead and to guide us, that we only want to acknowledge him at certain times? Now do you see why we end up in trouble? Now do you see why we end up in certain situations? Why? Because we don't acknowledge God at all times and believe that he is with us forever. He said the spirit of truth. I said, and so he's a spirit that has been sent to live on the inside, to make his abode to live on the inside of you. He says the world cannot accept him. 
So if the world cannot accept them, why is it that the church is studying, trying to get affirmation from the world? I told you we're supposed to be the light, not the world. Not Beyonce, not Mary J. Blige, uh, not Tupac. Right? We still think he's alive, but, you know, not, not Tupac, not P. Diddy, right? Not Biggie Smalls, right? 50 Cent, right? Who's the other guy with all the tattoos all over and the ring in his nose and lips? Who's that? Somebody know what they said. Look, see, I didn't know somebody know him there. See, he's a Lil Wayne, right? See, see, right, 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 right. We know. Right? We try to act like we don't know, but we know. Your radio your ain't always on 98.3. You see what I'm saying? And so what we have to understand is that the spirit of truth, the world cannot see him. The world cannot accept him, right? But as we look around, the church is constantly trying to get affirmation from the world because we don't want to rock the boat. He told us that we're supposed to be a peculiar people, a holy nation, right? Right? Which means that we're not supposed to be like everybody else. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here tonight. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. Amen. And so instead of patterning ourselves after the world, the world should be patterning itself after the church. Right? You know, and so what we have to understand is that, that the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. He said, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit wants to live in us so that he can instruct us of how to walk in the truth of God. Remember what I said on Sunday, right? Remember what I told you on Sunday, right? That, 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 that there's not, there's, this is not the time for, for compromise, but a time for resolute focus on the truth that is God's word. Right now, we need to be more focused on the word of God than anything else. With all the stuff that's going on around us, with all these things that happening, you know, I can't, you know, I, I, I should have had them turn me off tonight because I don't, I'm going to make a statement. I put me in jail or something. You know what I'm saying? But with all the stuff that's happening, with all the stuff that's going on, folks, I'm telling you now, if we're not rooted and grounded in the Word, we're going to be in for a rude awakening. These guys are making threats. These guys are saying all kinds of stuff about what they're going to do and what is going to happen. Don't think that they just passed this gun law for no reason now. There's a reason behind this thing. Right? And we need to, so, I remember a couple of years ago, I, 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 I preached a theme that year about stay woke. Being filled, familiar with your surroundings about what's going on. And right now we're about to drop our guard and we're not familiar with what's going on around us. You mean to tell me that you can get a gun at 18 and can't buy a pack of cigarettes? It's legal for you to get a gun that can kill somebody, but it's not legal for you to buy a pack of cigarettes that day. You got to be 21 to get cigarettes, right? No license, no nothing. Open carry. Anybody can carry a gun. Why would we pass such a law as that? Why would we institute something of that? Out of all of these people in the world, you mean to tell me that we can't find two honest, Holy Ghost-filled people to run for the president of these United States? You won't need but two. Out of how many? Four billion? Just two. Green, just two. That's all we need. Two. Not 200, not 20, just two people. You mean to tell me we can't find two people in this whole world that know God, that loves God, that will pray about what they're getting ready to do and lead this country in the right direction? Not two people? Here you go again. Who you want? Jesus or Barabbas? The truth or the lie? Right? And right now, everybody's screaming, 
Give us the lie. All right? All right? Give us Barabbas. All right? All right? Folks, what is, what is happening to this world? Again, it's been over time that, again, the enemy has continued to dwindle and wear us down. Just little things. Just little things. Just little things. Just, just taking away little things. Just taking away little things. Taking away little things. And now the little things have now become big things. Who ever thought the day that our school system would be a battleground? Who? Oh. Right? The society in which we live, right? Is messed up because we've lost focus and we're focusing on everything else except the Word of God. Huh? Right? John 16, 13, and 4 says this. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor, honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it to you. All right? See, I'm still talking about truth, see? All right? I'm still talking about truth, All right? See, see, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. Say, guide you into all truth. Now watch this. This is where we mess up now. The spirit of truth, when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. Who's the spirit of truth? The spirit of truth is the Holy Ghost. All right? And I asked this years ago, who should we be praying to? Should we be praying to Jesus or we should be, what should we be praying to? The Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is your guide. Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father. And I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father, but I will not leave you comforters. I'm going to send you a comforter and a guide. All right? So he sends me a guide. Right? He sends me a guide, someone to lead me and guide me. Well, watch this. I don't talk to the guide. I'm studying trying to talk to Jesus. And so the God said, I know how to get you there. But I know I need to talk to Jesus. And the Holy Ghost said, he sent me to bring, tell you how to be able to get there. No, I will not talk to you. I want to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to talk to Jesus. But he sent me to show you how to get to heaven. Huh? And so we miss the opportunity for answered prayer because sometimes we're talking. I know Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all the one, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, full and complete truth. But we don't talk about him that much because the only thing we think he can do is make a shout, speak in tongues, run, right? But he's been sent to guide you. He's been sent to guide you. When I was in Africa, we had a guide. And this guide, this guy, he took us everywhere that we asked him to take us. And then for us to be able to get back to the hotel that we were staying in, he had to take us back to that point too. Watch. Because we didn't know how to get there. We didn't know how to get from point A to point B. And we needed a guide to be able to help. Calling back to the United States, telling my wife, whoa, I'm on this long road. Can you tell me which turn I need to be able to make, get back? No, that ain't going to help me. The guy, the guy, he the one who's driving the car. He's the one that knows where to go. And guess who I need to be talking to? I need to be talking to him. Because he's going to be the one that's going to be able to get me to where I need to be. And a lot of times we end up talking to the wrong persons or the wrong individuals that cannot get us to where God would have for us to be. Huh? For he will not speak on his own initiative. Huh? Sometimes you talk to people and all they want to do is talk about themselves. <laughs> me, myself, and I. Whole conversation. Me, me, I, I, I did this, I did that. 
I'm my own self-made man. The devil is a lie. Everything that you got came from God. Amen? And everything that you'll ever have will come from God. For he will not speak on, uh, on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father. Right? The message regarding, watch this, the Son. Right? So whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you, he's getting and he's in direct communication with the Father to let you know what the Son would have for you to do in this situation that you're in. Oh, Jesus, that you're in right now. But the church ain't talking to the Holy Ghost. Remember what I told you Sunday? All we want to do is talk about the devil. The devil this and the devil that. The devil stealing, stealing my children. The devil done took my car. The devil done took my house, right? The devil, the, all the church does is talk about the devil. And Jesus said, huh, keep him under your feet. But acknowledge me. Do you see how the conversation has changed? The whole conversation in the church should be about God. And not the enemy. And we've, he's, he's turned our heads. He's caused us to get off focus that what we do now is that we talk about the enemy more than we talk about God. Right? Okay? We just, we just, we just think, we just think that we're going to make mistakes in everything we do. Right? <laughs> if I make any mistakes, take it for love. Me, 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 me. All that practicing you done done. Because he keeps us what? All focus. So now we're focusing more on the mess up than we are focused on singing under the anointing. I wish I had a witness in here tonight. Huh? And so we're, we're so jacked up. So we're more focused on the wrong than we are on the right. We're more focused in seeing bad than we are focused on seeing good. Huh? And so he said he, he'll give you whatever he's going to be, going to be full and complete. For we will, he will not speak of his own initiative, but he will speak whatsoever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. All right? In other words, the Holy, Holy Ghost is going to reveal to me what is yet to come. Watch this, and I don't have to be a witch. I don't have to be in sorcery. I don't have to be using root to be under, able to understand where God really wants to do what, where God really wants to take me. Right? It is the Holy Spirit's job to reveal to me the things that God would have me to know. He will glorify and honor me because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose it unto you. Right? The same way that Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him, and looked at him while he was dipping his hand in the bowl with him and say, whatever you do, do it quickly. Because he's still standing there telling him, Lord, is it I? And Jesus tells him that whatever you do, do it quickly. How did he know Judas was the one? Because the Holy Spirit had already revealed it to him. And there are some things that con that's concerning your life that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you so that you can have a more closer and more perfect walk with God so that you will know what it is that God desires for your life. Mm. Right? Listen, listen. But he, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. Say, guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father. All right? And so if I want to be correct, if I want to be able to walk in what God has ordained for me, I need to be communicating with the Holy Spirit. I need to be talking to him because he's got God's ear. 
Amen. God speaking to him. Oh, good God Almighty. Right? I need to be hearing from the one that's got God here. Right? And the Bible says that whatever he says, he's hearing from the Father that's concerning the Son that it might be revealed unto me. So there are some times that I don't need to be listening to you. Because you're still talking the okie doke. You're still talking about stuff that don't line up. You're still talking about stuff that don't make no sense. I need to make sure that I am in tune with the Spirit of God. That I might be in the absolute will of God to be able to walk out this life that God has given to me so I can bring glory and honor to him. Because he's going to disclose to me what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. All right, let me go back to it. Let me keep reading. I got to keep reading this for you, right? Right? This is not the time for compromise, but a time for resolute focus on the truth that is God's Word. And the enemy is constantly trying to distract us to keep us away from the Word of God. Now do you see why? Now do you see why? That he bombards us with so much crazy out of, out of all of the television channels on, that are on TV. You got, um, I looked at other thing, that thing go up to 2,000 and something channels on, on the network, on Spectrum Network, right? Okay? Out of 2,000 and something network stations, right, you got less than 10 Christian broadcast stations on the whole thing. And the way they got it mixed in there, you got to go to 200 channels to find one. Watch this. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you to be focused. So he brings all the other distractions. And so why are you trying to find TBN? Why are you trying to find the Victory Channel? Why are you trying to find Impact? Why are you find, trying to find the Word Network? You got to go through NBC, ABC, C, CNN, all that kind of stuff. You got to go through the Food Channel, the Home Network Channel. You got, and just before you get ready to get to the TBN, boom. Oh, God, look at that chicken. And he must be got a hundred rotisserie chicken. Up. Look at them ribs. Look at them ox tails, right? Whatever he has to do, and you never got to the to the to the Christian broad because they got distracted before you got there. That was at seven o'clock and eleven o'clock at night. Oh, I gotta go to bed now. Because we can't stay focused long enough. Right? And so he keeps sending distractions. He keeps sending things that continue to pull us away from the word of God. He continues to send us things that continue to pull us away from the things that God has ordained for our lives. Right? Right? And so when I don't focus on that word, it misses, I end up missing the opportunity to walk in the things that God has ordained for me. Right? And so I end up missing, missing the mark. I end up missing, right? Watch what we see, Ephesians 4, 14 and 15. Watch what he says, right? So that we are no longer children, spiritually immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about by every wind of shifting doctrine, by the cunning and trickery and unscrupulous of unscrupulous men, by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit, but speaking the truth in love in all things, both our speech and our lives expressing his truth, let us grow up in all things into him, following his example, who is the head, even Christ. So he already knew that we were going to have a problem staying focused. So he tells us in Ephesians that we got to get to the point so that we are no longer children spiritually immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about with every wind of shifting doctrine. At church, we're jumping behind everything. Right? Still being tossed to and fro because we can't stay focused long enough to understand that whatever God has said that that word is a word that will carry me from here until eternity. 
We, won't, we can't stay focused. We can't stay focused long enough, right? And so we're still, watch the spiritually immature. Paul deals with the church. He said, by now you should be eating meat. But I still need to give you milk because you're still immature. And we're being tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea and carried about with every wind of shifting doctrine by the cunning and trickery of unscrupulous men. Every time something new come out. Right? Oh, they baptized in a new, other, new way over there. They baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost, Jesus, and the Father. I got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but they baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Son, and the Father. They said that's the right way to go. So here I go, and I've been baptized ten times. I'm going to get baptized again. Trickery. Cunning craftiness. Right? right? Debating, arguing about stuff, right? That's not important. Baptism cannot save you. Baptism is a sign of obedience. That once you have become saved, that you now have a desire to do things the way that God would have for you to do them. So the first commandment, he tells you that after you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, be baptized. To show the world that an inward change has now taken place in your life. That the old man is no longer what he used to be. That old things are passed away and behold all things have become new. We try to turn baptism into a, a doctrine of belief. Oh, if you're not baptized, right? If you're not baptized, if you're not baptized, if you're not baptized, blah, 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 blah. You cannot get baptized until you accept Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Until you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus died and arose from the grave. That's the only way you can be saved. And then once you become saved, now you have a right to be baptized. Right? Until you have confessed your sins and have been baptized, you don't have a right to take communion. Because you don't know how to discern the Lord's body. You cannot discern his body as a sinner. You cannot discern his body if you have not been born again. The only way you can do that is that you must be born again. Other than that, you don't know what the heck you're doing. You're just going through the motions. You cannot take communion just because everybody else is taking. You got to know why. He said, if you eat and drink in an unworthy manner, you eat and, eat and drink damnation to your soul. You mean you not accept the Christ and you've been taking communion all your life and you still going to go to hell? Because you don't know him. You haven't confessed. You haven't given your life to Christ. Spiritually immature. Tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea carried about by every wind of shifting doctrine. By the cunning and trickery of unscrupulous men, by the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit. We let people fool us. They told us we had to have church pews to go into church. What is a church pew? Who created that? For what? Profit. Just because that cross on the end of that bench don't make that bench. That bench can't save you. Are you listening to me? All right? And there'll be those that would come in and they would tell you, oh, you got, you got chairs in there. You got chairs. Well, that's still a chair. It's just, just a long bench. It's still the same, it do the same thing. It ain't in, it's, it's, not in, it's not in the stained glass windows. 
I understand beautification. I understand holiness. I understand all of those things. But don't get it twisted like the seat or the window is going to save us. It's about you having a personal relationship with God. That part. Right? For personal profit. For personal gain. Right? Repass. Same thing. I, I finally did the research on that to find out where that came from. I thought that was I thought that was ordinance. I thought that was something had to be done. Right? You know David, right? You know David, when he went through all those things with his family and, 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 and went through all that mourning and everything and finally buried everybody, right? And so after the thing, after he had buried, had buried his child, right, he looked at the people and said, I'm hungry. That was right after the funeral. And so they went and had a big feast and fixed him something to eat. And so ever since then, guess what we've been doing? That's where it came from. All right? So at funerals, all we do is what? He. All right? Thinking that again, that it's something spiritual, but it's not. David said, I'm hungry. And because he was the king, they fixed him a whole bunch of food. We're grabbing hold of things, folks, watch this, by the tricky and cunning, cunning crafters of men that are leading, that is leading us further and further and further away from God. So he said, we no longer need to be, we no longer be, need to be children being tossed and fruit, but we need to what? We need to be speaking the truth in love in all things, both our speech and in our lives expressing the truth. How in the world can I be a born-again believer and then don't love people? It cannot. He said I should be expressing that through love, through my speech, and through my living. That what I say needs to line up with the way that I live. He said, let us grow up in all things unto him, following his example. Jesus loved everybody. He treated everybody correctly. He handled every situation that he had to deal with. He handled it in a decently and orderly manner. Hmm? That's why the Bible says that we are to imitate Christ. Do as he has done. Right? And we're trying to go by something else. Right? Follow his example, who is the head, who is Christ. So the truth of the matter is that I need to make sure that whatever I'm doing in my speech, in my expressions of living, I need to be following the head, which is Christ. The church needs to be following the head, which is Christ. That means whatever we do should be Christ-centered. That whatever we're doing, God should be getting the glory out of it. Oh, I got to read, I got to read this. 1 John 3, 18 and 19. Watch what he says here. All right? He said, little children, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word and with tongue, giving lip service to compassion, but in action and in truth, all right? Even little children believers, let us not love merely in theory. You know what we do? A lot of us got theory love. We really don't know how to love people, all right? What's a theory? I love you because you love me, all right? I love you because you're going to give me something, all right? No, 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 no. I'm supposed to be loving you with my whole heart, all right? 
Our whole heart, mind, body, and soul. We're loving in theory, right? With words or with tongue. We just talk it loud and ain't saying giving lip service to compassion, right? Huh? But in action and in truth, in practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. It's more than words. And we talk a lot, folks. We say a whole lot of stuff that we don't mean. That's why we change like the wind. The day you with me, tomorrow you against me. As long as I got fish and bread, you with me. As soon as the fish and bread run out, you holler, crucify him, crucify him. <laughs> That's what they did. They hung around Jesus, eat up all his food. Right? Followed the Bible said he went away, he went away to get some rest, say that they wanted they followed him to a desert place. Hung around until it was time to eat. The disciples said, send them away. Say, too many of them, we can't feed them. <laughs> it's too, they ready to eat. He said, send them. They said, send them. They went to Jesus and said, it's too many of them. We need to send them away to the villages. We'll go back and read. They didn't say send them to the village. He said, we need to send them away to the villages because one village can't handle them. And they sat running right there until they ate up 5,000 loaves of bread and fish. And when he needed them to stand with him, he couldn't find them. Even Peter looked at him and said, I don't know him. Not me. You got, you got me mistaken. You got me mixed up with something. I'm not one of them. See, when pressure comes, see, that's when I'm going to find out whether you really love me or not. See, when tough time comes, that's when I'm going to really see whether you got my back or not, or whether, you, whether you've just been talking a good game. Right? Back in the day, we used to call that rapping. Right? What's your rap? Right? You ain't mean what you say. It was just lines that you use to try to get what you want. I ain't got nobody on this side. I have to go all the way to the back, talk to them back there. Because y'all think, huh? That's a, uh, 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 it was just lines that you use to get what you want. Oh, baby, you know I love you. Line. Line. <laughs> right? Just line, right? Just speaking words, right? Just saying things, huh? Merely in theory with your tongue giving lip service, Right? Okay? And nothing what you say is lining up. See, that's the danger of where we are right now. See, we're being challenged because right now, because of what's going on in the world, we can't talk our way through no more. See? We're being put to the test that we're going to have to live what we talk about. Because everybody's watching. Everybody's scrutinizing. Right? You walking on, you walking through Walmart, you don't know that you're on FaceTime. Because somebody filming you. Right? You know that last argument you had in Walmart? It's, it's, it's out there. You got 10,000 hits and don't even know it. You just ain't seen it yet. Right? Because everybody is criticizing and scrutinizing everything that comes along, and that's why you can't just talk anymore. You got to be able to live what you talk about. He says, put into action and into truth, into practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. By this we will know without any doubt that we are the truth and will assure our hearts and quiet our conscience because him, before him, whenever our heart convicts us in guilt, our God is greater than our heart and he knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him because we are in his hands. 
In other words, he's telling us now that if we do something or we say something or we act a way, he said our heart is going to convict us. And when our heart convicts us, that means that God has convicted us. And if God has convicted us, that means that we need to ask for forgiveness. Are you listening to me? All right? So he's telling us the truth about this thing, the truth about our hearts, the truth about our relationship, the truth about what comes. He said you got to be able to not just talk it, but you got to be able to live what you talk about. And he said, we will know without a doubt that we're in truth and we will be assured by our heart. That's why God in the Old Testament, he said, I'm no longer going to write it on the tables on the wall, but I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to place it where? In your heart. Because I done tried the tablets. I done tried the Ten Commandments. I done tried the handwriting on the wall. And none of that stuff moved you. So I'm going from there and I'm going to put it in your heart so that when you do do wrong, your heart is going to convict you. Truth. And you should know the truth. The truth shall make you free. For God is greater than our heart. And he knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him. Good God Almighty. You might be hiding from me, but you can't hide from God. He sees you. Right? He sees you. He knows exactly what you're doing. Right? Nothing is hidden from him. He knows all things. We are in his hands. He knows everything. He knows everything about our lives. He knows what's yet to come. He knows what's next. Right? Not the time for compromise, but a time for resolute focus on the truth that is God's word. I cannot allow myself to continue to be moved by every wind of doctrine that comes along. I guess somebody say, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. I gotta stay focused. I gotta stay, I gotta stay focused. Because if I don't stay focused, that means I'm distracted. And when I'm distracted, we make mistakes. Wow, wow, let me prove to you. That's why they tell you, you know what? Don't take some drive. Because if you're texting, that means you ain't watching the road, which means you're distracted. Distract, that means that you're not paying attention to the road sign. You're not paying attention to what's going on around you. Don't text and drive. Don't text and drive. Keeps warning us which means that if we're doing it, we're not focused. I says, and the church is guilty of not being focused. Well, that's the truth. And because we're not focused, I says, lives are being lost in the balance while we're playing games. And going through the motions. Coming to the regular club meet. Looking for fish and bread. Oh, they serving food over there today. You want church full of people? Serve some food. They ain't paying, they ain't paying. I thought they said they, say they come for the word. I thought they said we were going to be ready to eat by 12. <laughs> Lost focus. Come for the wrong reason. All right? For to be here for the word of God in order for the altar and transform our life, we start focusing on the wrong things. And when 
we start focusing on the wrong thing, we start losing the ground that God has given to us to be able to do greater things. We got somebody one more time. Tell them, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Why? So you no longer be children, spiritually immature, tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea. Carried by with every wind of shifting doctrine. Right? By the cunning and trickery and unscrupulous men. By the deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit. Hmm? Stay focused because if you don't, right? Because the Bible says even in the last days, these are the very elect are going to be deceived. Hmm? By the cunning craftiness, the trickery. Cunning craftiness of men. Slick Rick and the gang. Trying to find a way to get over. Hallelujah. Come on, put your blessed hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody standing all over this place as we prepare to exit here on tonight. Hallelujah. burden of truth. The burden of truth. God wants to reveal to us his truth. Not so we can just talk about it. But so we can walk in it. And walk in it with authority. Hallelujah. The whole truth. So that we can be the children that God would have us to be. Right? That we'd be no longer tossed to and fro. I've said this for years, and I keep telling you that in the first time, if I ever come in here and tell you that we don't need that Bible no more, we're going another way. Don't try to call no committee meeting. Don't try to find out the right way to do it. There need to be enough men, godly men, to grab me and drag me out this church and said, because if we follow you, we all going to hell. See, we ain't got time to play for We ain't got time to go through emotion. There ain't but one way. That's the right way. That's Jesus Christ. That's with him. All right? This is no joke. This is no game. All right? And if I want to play, I better go someplace where they have in recess because the word of God is nothing to play with. All right? Let us not love merely in theory with word or with tongue giving lip service, but in action and in truth. I got to be able to love you because it's the right thing to do because that's what's in my heart, that that's what the Holy Spirit has led me to do is to love sincerely. All right? And because I tell you I love you, that don't mean I go with you. It's a godly love. All right? I ain't thinking about you. <laughs> but that's who I am. That's what my makeup is. My makeup is supposed to be love. Paul said, greet one another with a holy kiss. Right? Godly. We got to get it right. Right? Because I tell another man I love him, that don't mean I'm gay. Love from the heart, which means I'm concerned about you. I'm ready to look out for your best, your well-being. 
Now, I might tell Brother Pat, Pat I love him so he can pay me some pecan twirls, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, when you say that, you say that out of genuine love that you have for the brethren. Right? And so we're not loving merely on theory with tongue and lip, but we're saying it because that is what the Holy Ghost has put on the inside of us. Come on, because you've got another hand clap of plays. I'm going to pray. And we're getting ready to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget Sunday is Palm Sunday. Amen. Palm Sunday. We're going to celebrate Christ, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Amen. On Sunday. Amen. And we're going to continue to talk about the truth and understand that even when the truth came, they could not accept him. Could not accept him because he didn't do it the way that they wanted it to be done. Amen. And, but he came to his own and his own received him not. I couldn't even receive it because they were looking for something else. Right? And that's a lot of times why people can't receive us because they're looking for something else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Grab somebody's hand right quick. Amen. Grab somebody's hand right quick in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody on tonight. I pray that the rest of this week be a joyful week with you for you. Amen. And again, the message on Sunday, amen. If you, don't, you can't remember nothing else, just remember you. 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 That, that, that's it. You. And you shall know the truth. <laughs> and the truth shall make you free. Amen. You. That, that's the message. Amen. Amen. You. Amen. amen. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we again, we honor and bless and we thank you and we praise you for this day and this moment and this opportunity, again, just to be able to bask in your holy and divine presence. We thank you for your people that have come on tonight. Thank you for the love that we have in our hearts on right now. God, thank you for what your spirit has done in this place on tonight. God, you've touched us, God. you strengthened us, God. You've given us more insights. You've given us more wisdom. You've given us more knowledge. And we thank you for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, as we prepare to leave this place but never your presence. God, let your anointing continue to rest on us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we're believing you for all things great and small in the name of Jesus. We're believing you for miracles. We're believing you for breakthrough, God. We're believing you for an outpouring right now in the name of Jesus on our families, on our kindreds, on our relatives, God. We're believing that all things got to work together for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. You said that man should always pray and to pray without ceasing. And so here we are tonight calling on your holy and divine name, believing that you are with us and you're in our midst right now in the name of Jesus. And so God, as we stand tonight, we begin to call those things that be not as though they were, God. We denounce sickness right now in the name of Jesus. We come against anything that goes against your word because you said that by your stripes we are healed, which means that sickness cannot stand in your presence. Arthritis got to go. Rheumatism got to go. Diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, all those things got to subside because your word is true. And so, God, we believe, we believe your word tonight God that all things got to work together for our good that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that you caused me to be the head and not the tail you put me in a position to be above and not beneath and I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus and so I speak life over my family I speak life over my children I speak life over my wife I speak blessings over my grandchildren I speak a special anointing upon those that are trying to see and find you and know you for who you are God anoint them afresh right now with the name of Jesus that they might walk in everything that you've ordained for their lives thank you now thank you now you said we have not because we ask not and so tonight God we ask that whatsoever we ask for you said is ours in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and ye shall have. So tonight we believe God. We believe God 
everything that the passion that you placed in our heart, we believe now in the name of Jesus. Thank you now. Thank you now. Thank you, God. You said if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, God. If we're lacking anything, we ask you now. Grant it unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are watching us by live stream, let your spirit penetrate the airwaves and touch them in their homes, in their cars, in their bedrooms, at their kitchen table, wherever they may be right now. Touch right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Sister Alfie Montgomery. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Touch her God. Hallelujah. Be with her. As she lays her grandson to rest, God. Strengthen her right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch Deacon Robert Pringle and his family right now as they lay their sister, prepare to lay their sister to rest. Touch him, God. Give them a special anointing now that will strengthen them for the journey. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessing. We thank you for the outpouring. We thank you for the releasing of your spirit. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory tonight. We give you honor, Lord. And Lord knows we give you praise because you are the anointed one. And the Bible talks of how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about healing all that was sick and oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And God, as you were with Jesus, be with us in the name of Jesus. That everything, everywhere the sole of our feet shall tread, that you'll give it to us. We give us victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you now. Thank you. Thank you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless this offering that has been taken and given in your name. Let it be used for the purpose in which it has been given. And that is to advance your kingdom here on earth. And so, Father, we thank you tonight for all that you've done. And, God, we come and we prepare ourselves with great expectation as we prepare to assemble ourselves together again on Sunday morning to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. We honor you now. We bless you now. In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Come on and put those blessed hands together and give God a hand clap of praise on tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Go in peace and the peace of God go with you. Hallelujah.